Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Nobody Asked Me Guy show. Hey, guys, listen, we have a fantastic show. We have none other than Dr. Richard J. Rick Gallo, Jr. Esquire. Yeah, he's the, cha the chancellor of Grambling State University, and yes, they are the Tigers. So listen, there's so many things that, that we're going to talk about this morning. Uh, Doc Dr. Gallo is going to be sharing with us all of the wonderful, fantastic things that are happening at Grambling in GSU country. But please afford me the opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to share with you just a little bit about uh, uh, Dr. Gallo. And I say a little bit because there's so much here and give us the opportunity to share with you so that you'll know what's going on. Uh, he's presently, as you know, the chancellor of Grambling State University. And uh, in 2016, he was president of the board of directors, uh, members for the CLECO Corporation. Uh, he served on various committees. He also has a uh, has a law office. So if you if you need some uh, help uh, in that area, uh, he has a law office in, in Ruston, uh, Louisiana, uh, right there. He's uh, also District 29 vice chairman from 2012, 2016. He's the state senator and was the District 29 vice chairperson, Commerce Committee member, Agriculture and Revenue and Fiscal Affairs, Louisiana House of Representatives. And from 2000, 2012, state representative, District 11 chairman, House and Governmental Affairs Committee member, House Executive Committee, Judiciary and Civil Law. Now, obviously, he was a city council person in Grambling, Louisiana from 1995 to 99, adjunct professor at uh, Grambling State University. Uh, he received some, some several pieces of his training as a senior executive in state and local government from John F. Kennedy School of Government, Harvard University, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Now, 2012 premier 100 Louisiana trial attorney, American Academy of Trial Attorneys. 2015 organizations, community public service, fraternal Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity. Some of you guys know a little bit about, about Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity. Uh, excuse me. Member of the Evangelist Lodge, number 144, uh, Saul Staff Royal Arch, Masons at, in Grambling, Louisiana, uh, professional American Association of State Colleges and Universities, on the President's Advisory Board, National Association of HBCU, Title II Administrators, Louisiana State Bar Association, American Bar Association, National Bar Association, Louisiana Association for Justice, Lincoln Parish Bar Association. He was president of that organization from 1998 to 2000. American College of Corporate Directors, Committee of 100 for Economic Development Incorporation. Now licensed to practice law, uh, Supreme Court of the United States of America, State of Louisiana, United States District Court, Eastern Middle and Western Districts of Louisiana and Southern Districts of Alabama, Southern Districts of Mississippi, United States Court of Appeals, Fifth Circuit, and the 11th Circuit Court. Uh, he received his Juris Doctorate from uh, Southern University School of Law in Baton Rouge, uh, Bachelor of Arts of History and Grambling from 1987. Uh, he's also academic uh, academic merit, merit scholar, presidential merit scholar, national dean's list, who's who in American colleges and universities, a member of the famed Marja Tiger, uh, Tiger Marching Band, I'm sorry, uh, Jazz Band and History Club. Uh, the awards are many, however, we won't read them all, but we'll read some for you. He's Outstanding Young Man of America in 1988 in Lincoln Parish, Outstanding Young Person, Award Russell J.C.'s 2000, Legislator of the Month, uh, June 2001, Louisiana Municipal Association, 2001, uh, 10 Leaders of the New Century in Northwest Louisiana, Shreveport Times, 2001, Friends of Louisiana Municipal Association, 2002-2003, Legislation, Legislator, I'm sorry, of the Year, Louisiana Chapter, National Conference of Black Mayors. 2002, Legislator of the Year, Chamber of Southwest Louisiana. 2011, National Conference of State Legislators, Co-Chair Redistrict Redistricting and Elections Committee, Grambling State University Alumni Hall of Fame. Check that out, guys. Uh, top 100 trial lawyers, the American Trial Lawyers Association, and 2009 Southern University Law Center Alumni Hall of Fame. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I think you will agree that many people throw the title around of being renaissance, but uh, brother Rick Gallo Jr. Esquire is truly a renaissance gentleman. So if you will help me in joining as, as we speak with Dr. Gallo. Dr. Gallo, good morning, sir. Good, good morning, Melvin. And thank you so much for, uh, for having me on, on your show and to all those uh, who might be uh, viewing all, all across the globe. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, time and uh, interest in uh, the place where everybody is somebody, Grambling State University. 
Fantastic. Well, Dr. Gallo, we, we'd like to just kind of move on into our, our conversation about Grambling and about Dr. Gallo. And we know that you have so many things going on and and uh, we don't know where you might like to start because this this is the Nobody Asked Me Guy show, but it's your show today. <laughs> it's your show today. So, uh, you know, if you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself, uh, 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 what the university is doing. I, I've been reading a lot of information. I see where the enrollment is up and things are just going on. So if you might want to share a little bit of that with us, please do. So so, so that's a good good place to jump off. So we, uh, we are currently experiencing uh, continued growth uh, in enrollment here, here at Grambling. We are at a seven year high right now with our enrollment. So our, our fall enrollment is uh, 5,232. Uh, we had uh, coming in, in in 2016, a five year goal of reaching uh, enrollment of 6,000. And so when you look at our incremental growth since uh, 2016 and, and where we are this year in 2019, uh, we feel very confident that that we will in fact hit that 6,000 uh, enrollment uh, number. Now, of course, uh, with growth also uh, becomes challenges in that uh, we are essentially full in terms of our student housing. And so, and of course, that's a good problem to have, uh, but we also know that it, it is bringing about the, uh, the necessity to not only look at expanding our footprint and, and having additional housing uh, here on campus to uh, accommodate the growth and enrollment, uh, but also taking advantage of the opportunity to uh, uh, roll out programs that will be uh, online. And so, you know, we currently have uh, several of our master's programs that are, are online, our uh, master's in uh, public administration, our criminal justice, uh, our uh, master's in, uh, in developmental education. We also have our doctorate in uh, developmental education that is all online as well. So, you know, we, we've had uh, success with uh, with all of those programs and, and certainly look to uh, to grow those and, and, and actually market them. You know, we've seen tremendous growth without any online marketing at all, which is, you know, it, it's amazing to see these programs grow without, I mean, not even a little bit of, of marketing uh, directly right. on those uh, programs. And of course, you know, anybody who's in you know, any social media platform, you will see, you know, school ads pop up all the time, you know, get your master's degree here, get this degree there. I mean, I'm telling you with, with zero uh, marketing, which of course will change and we, uh, we will begin to uh, market and advertise our, our online programs. Uh, we have gotten approval now to offer our bachelor's degree in general studies all online. And so that, right. yeah, so that is, uh, that's a program that, uh, that we're really excited about uh, as a, not only as a standalone program that we will, will market and make available to the world, but it will also complement uh, an initiative of the University of Louisiana system, uh, which is the Compete LA program. And essentially it is to address the, the number of uh, individuals in our state who have some college credit, uh, but no degree. And uh, okay. yeah, the estimates that, uh, that, that we've gotten through our, our system office and through the Board of Regents is that one in five adults in Louisiana have some college credit without, uh, without a degree. So if you can imagine the, the, the pool of potential uh, students who are out there. And of course, you know, life happens. Uh, you, know, um, you know, there are a number of things that, uh, that will, will sometimes sidetrack individuals and, uh, and they're not able to complete their degree. So this is, again, an initiative of the University of Louisiana system to provide a pathway for those individuals who, who reside in our state who did gain some, uh, some credit at, but did not complete. So uh, we're again, all of these initiatives, you know, sort of coming together uh, simultaneously, I believe, provides us with the opportunity to continue our, our current uh, growth trajectory. Well, wow. that's a lot of stuff. And, and as you've already alluded to, the fact that basically in, in, in today's cyber world, mm -hmm. usually if, if, if there is no social media, 
presentations, I should say, then things kind of just dwindle. But it's, it's fantastic work that's that's happening uh, in Grambling at the, at the university and certainly underneath your leadership. So that's fantastic. Now, well, if, if I, I can, yeah, if, if I can kind of back up just a little bit, sure. if we can talk, about, uh, you know, HBCUs are extremely important mm -hmm. to to us all, and even to those individuals that may not understand. But if you will, if you kind of touch on that a little, the the importance of HBCUs, because I'm listening at all of the programs that, that that you're sharing just at Grambling, and we know that there are other HBCU institutions. So with the situations of many students not quote qualifying unquote uh, to enter various universities uh, in various regions uh, just how important are the hbcus oh, well you know i i would argue that uh, that hbcus are as relevant if not more relevant than when we first began and many you know many of the hbcus if you track you know began post reconstruction you know the late 1800s uh, early 1900s, Grambling, uh, of course, uh, was founded in, in 1901 by uh, Charles P. Adams. Uh, we, we just finished uh, our Founders Week, so of course, a lot of this is still <laughs> fresh, uh, fresh on my mind. Of course, Booker T. Washington, who was at uh, Tuskegee, uh, sent Charles P. Adams here to rural North Louisiana to, uh, to start this school that, that ultimately became uh, Grambling State University. Uh, you know, although, you know, through integration and, and you know, all, all these other, uh, you know, advancements in, in society that, that took place, uh, the, the fact is there, there is still a meaningful place for HBCUs in, uh, in higher education. Uh, and, and one of the things that I'm, I always say to prospective students as I'm out, and I, I do personal, I personally recruit uh, students, we go out with our uh, recruiting teams as often as I can, and also try to tie those into visits to to other areas. And, and I tell students, you know, at Grambling, you will be celebrated, not tolerated. All right. Okay. So you know, I I think you know if you look across the country, you know, things that are going on right now and have yes. been 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 going on, where uh, you know black students have not. Uh, Felt like they've had a meaningful place at, mm -hmm. uh, at certain institutions, and certainly it's not an indictment on on all PWIs, but but right. certainly there have been those instances. And, and I mean, I, I'll, I'll use this as an example. One of our alums, uh, who's originally from right there in Gippsland, Louisiana, uh, Charles Blow. Uh, Charles's son uh, was at Yale and was uh, going to the library and was confronted by university police uh, and wow. had a weapon pulled on him by the university police because this young African-American male was going to the library. And, and you know, wow. I, I, I tell, uh, again, our prospective students, you know, no university police officer at Graham is gonna pull a gun on you for going to the library. You know, as a matter of fact, we'll have, you know, teachers and others encouraging you to, to, to go there. And, and so, uh, and, and I know that's a, you know, an isolated event and, and, uh, and not all institutions uh, provide that kind of uh, atmosphere. But again, you, you know, you only, you know, have to, I would say open the newspaper, but open your, your internet browser. And, uh, and there's all, you know, sorts of uh, incidents that, that are occur occurring across the country where uh, in this current, political environment of uh, intolerance and, and of uh, division that, uh, that, that exists. I think you, you have a segment of individuals out there who, who have been empowered and emboldened to, uh, mm -hmm. to not treat fairly those who don't look like them or, or you know, share the same ethnic background. And, and so uh, I think you, know, you, you look at HBCUs and, and we provide that safe space that uh, that our students are, are looking for some place where they can get an education without the distractions of the racial tension and you know and other yeah. things that that may exist at uh, at other institutions and and quite frankly to come to a place where they again feel celebrated and not mm -hmm. tolerated some place where they are uh, they're free to to express their blackness without uh, without that uh, making them an oddball you, you, you know, 
And, and again, for 18 to, to 22, 23 year olds who are in a process of, of finding themselves and, and developing, you know, they, they need to have that, that freedom of, of connection um, to, uh, you know, to, to who they, who they are. And so, you know, I, I use this as an example all the time. I say, you know, we, we had a student who uh, came to Grambling from, uh, from the Dallas area a few years back who participated in every talent show, every play, every opportunity to, uh, to publicly perform. Um, back then, uh, she was known as Erica Wright. Uh, today we know her as Erica Badu. Yeah. yeah, and so you know, again, she is she is an example of of being in a place where she was free to express herself as a as an artist. And I know in one of her songs, she she talks about the uh, about you know freedom to be an artist. But but I, I yeah, yeah you, you know what I'm talking about. So I do. You know, yeah. So so again, you know this this is this is an environment, and you know whether it's you know it's Erica Badu or or somebody like a, a Ronnie Coleman, for instance, who uh, is originally from uh, from Bastrop, uh, came here to Grambling, uh, majored in in accounting, but also was uh, was a football player for Coach Eddie Robinson. Uh, got in the gym and and worked out. Uh, you know, after he got his degree in accounting, moved, moved to the Dallas area, and became a, a professional bodybuilder and was an eight time Mister Olympia. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, he, wow. Yeah. He is someone who started from very humble beginnings, but uh, you know, was able to uh, begin that uh, that that journey of bodybuilding while here at Grambling, and, and again, mm -hmm. went on to, uh, to to be an eight-time Mr. Olympia. He's being honored. Uh, it was just announced. Uh, his he's being inducted into the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame in in their next uh -huh. class. And, uh, okay. So again, you know, we we've got so many. Uh, you know, so many alums and, and those who, who have passed uh, this way, who've used this opportunity to, to really grow and, and, uh, and, and cultivate themselves and, and have gone out to do, you know, really amazing, uh, amazing things. You know, Doc, as you share that, that's why, if I may say briefly, when, when I was a young man living, growing up in Bossier City, Louisiana, I was always uh, just just thrilled with Grambling because of what you're sharing about the alumni. And I'd always heard all of these great things about Grambling and the alumni that had gone through there. And it's just uh, uh, gives one a, a sense of belonging and a sense of warmth and that kind of thing. And, and so as, as you share about the uh, distinguished alumni, I've, I've been blessed to have to have met a few. Uh, as actually, uh, Gary Binghans Johnson and I uh, are cousins and we're best friends. And he, he's one of your major uh, persons. Uh, I, we, we, we did football camps in Michigan and Doug Williams and, and guys would come down and work with us and help us. So, you know, we, we've been blessed to just know uh, some of those distinguished gentlemen that have been through there. We know academia. Uh, Judy Mason, actually, Doc, and I'm going to be brief, Judy Mason, the playwright, you know, uh, when you're five or six years old and you have girlfriends, that was my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I do understand. But, you know, as we talk about the alumni, Doc, you mentioned a, a stellar icon of Grambling State University in the person of Coach Eddie Robinson. Absolutely. Now, I will you will you expound on Coach a little bit? Because I could talk all day about him. It's not not my turn to talk. So, you know, and it, it's interesting. And I, I was just over at the uh, museum yesterday. I'm, I'm there at, at least once or twice a week, and it's literally right next door uh, to my office. And my my wife uh, hosted a uh, a coffee event for First Lady uh, Donna Edwards yesterday, uh, where she talked about uh, her platforms of uh, human trafficking and, and a number of the, the initiatives she's she's been involved in. But as I was giving one of the guests a, a you know a tour around and and you know talking about the the fact that when Ralph Waldo Emerson Jones hired Eddie Robinson in, in 1941, he uh, charged or challenged him to make Grambling football the Black Notre Dame of college football. Now, can you imagine the uh, the struggles that uh, that that one would uh, would encounter? Being at a uh, at a predominantly black 
college in rural North Louisiana right. in the 1940s. Right. And the 1950s and in right. the 1960s to have overcome, you know, the, the, the segregation, the, the racism, the discrimination, Jim Crow, mm -hmm. all, all of these institutionalized uh, tools of uh, discrimination that, that Coach Robinson and, and his teams encountered, you know, many of them at that time, the early years especially, went off to war and fought for this country and came back to a, a racially segregated uh, uh, country. And, and so, right. again, when, when you think about overcoming all of that to have accomplished all that uh, that he did, and I think one of the, one of the things that, that's very key about Coach Robinson, and I remember one of his last public uh, appearances where, where he gave a speech to the Monroe Chamber, and he, he talked about the fact that, you know, yes, I have, you know, uh, you know, coach teams and we've won, you know, all these games and, you know, I've gotten all the accolades and the awards and all of that. He said, but, you know, above and beyond all of that, what I'm most proud of is being an American and living right. in the greatest country in the world. You know, I, I think, you know, how, how do you, how do you really attack someone with that level of character who, despite all of the challenges that that he and the young men he, he coached and others faced throughout his his uh his lifetime to still firmly believe in the values and the, and the democratic society of the united states of america you know that was i think one of the things that had really set him apart and why he was able to accomplish as much as he did and you think of you know over 200 players uh, who played for Coach Robinson going to the uh, going to the NFL and and I, I certainly want to encourage everyone who who may be watching this now or, or on the rebroadcast to come and visit the Eddie Robinson Museum. We we, we literally have uh, tourists who come from uh, from as far away as China mm -hmm. and put the Eddie Robinson Museum on their list of things they want to see while visiting the, this country. So I mean, we have visitors from all over the world. It is the most visited of all of the Secretary of State's museums in the state of Louisiana. And of course, we get a lot of school kids in buses and whatnot, uh, which which obviously drives a lot of traffic there. But uh, it, it is just, uh, it's a great museum and I certainly want to encourage uh, everyone to uh, to come and, and, and visit the museum and, and see the, the chronology of, of his life from uh, from being born in uh, around the Baton Rouge area in 1919 to uh, to his his death and uh, he would have been 100 years old this year and and as a side note uh, Conrad Hutchinson who was longtime band director at Grambling also mm -hmm. was born in 1919 and would have been 100 mm -hmm. in uh, in October so we, we've uh, designated the month of October here on the campuses. Uh, Conrad Hutchinson Jr. Month on the campus of, of Grambling State University. And there is a part in the Eddie Robinson uh, Museum uh, featuring the, the band. And, and he would often say that, you know, we, we travel as, as a package. And, uh, you know, much of what, what the world knows about Grambling involves Coach Robinson, the football program, and the world famed Tiger Marching Band. So, mm -hmm. uh, so those are certainly two of the. Uh, uh, two of those uh, uh, organizations that that really put us on the map. Yeah, yeah. but you know, Doc, I, I, I'm smiling so because as a football player myself, and and once I got to be an adult, etc., just what you've stated, perfect segue, because there was always a lot of conversation about well, you know, people actually go to the Bayou Classic to see the band. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah, Doc, even even now, and, and as God is my witness, even now, there's still arguments going back and forth, you know, about uh, people going to see the band and how the band made the football team just as famous. And right. so you, you nailed it. You hit it on the head. Yeah, uh, I, I some, <laughs> yes, sir. So that, that's perfect. Well, now, you know, you know, as we talk about the football team and we talk about the band, there is so much tradition 
in Tiger Land. I mean, there's just tradition all over the place, if you will. Uh, you, you've already expounded so eloquently on the band and about the football, but we know there are other traditions. We know, and, and we know that, that there are uh, alumni that, that have gone above and beyond and, and have achieved things that people uh, never thought would have happened, you being one of them. Uh, you know, being a, a, a local, if, if, if I remember correctly from your, from your resume, as a matter of fact, if I recall, now, your dad, well, you guys owned the haberdashery there in Grambling, didn't you? Or did you still own it? Or That was, uh, that was the Wilkerson family that owned the-, uh, the Wilkerson's, okay. Uh, and and it, is, it, is still, uh, it is still in operation. Uh, my, uh, my family always uh, owned various businesses around. Uh, okay. Dad had a, you know, uh, and he, he was a barber by trade. So uh, okay. he cut hair for, oh God, 50 plus years. And uh, okay. they had a cafe at, at one time, gas station and, and other, uh, other That's well, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, and then at one okay. point, he, uh, he served as, as mayor of Grambling in the early 80s. And, right. Yeah, right. My mom worked here at Grambling. She, uh, this is the only place she ever worked. Uh, okay. When, uh, when she graduated from, from college in 1959, uh, mm -hmm. she went to work uh, on campus and ultimately 44 years Later, she retired as the uh, head of the uh, Department of History, Philosophy, and Geography uh, uh, here at uh, here at Grambling. And you know, uh, uh, Dr. Gallo, as you share that, the reason I want to go there is it, it, because many times academics kind of gets lost in the in, in the shuffle, mm -hmm. and, and obviously, uh, sports are things that we can see. Uh, entertainment and with the band or things that we can see. But when it comes to the academic piece of what we do and how we transpose ourselves and how we move forward, it is, I don't think it gets enough conversation. So sure. we, we have people uh, in the persons of Dr. Gallo and, and other gentlemen of whom names kind of escape me now as I'm, I'm having a senior moment here, but uh, have, 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 you know, because uh, if I can backtrack myself and come forward again, 99.9% of the time, I'm sure most people can tell stories of that quote, young man or young woman that was supposed to be successful, but they weren't, mm -hmm. or and or that young man or young woman that was not supposed to be successful, but they were. Right. And to see, and to see them come together, them being the, the two polar opposites, and to do things that are uh, most many people thought were was a given and then many people thought could not happen is always something that i that i uh, see transpiring so as i as you share with me about the, the many things that that your father did uh being the barber uh, you know being uh, having uh, i remember that service station by the way uh if, if i if i'm thinking about the right one and doing various things and i do remember him being the mayor of grambling etc so to to see his son sitting here as at the helm of his alma mater is pretty special because I haven't done the percentages, Dr. Gallo, but I would love to do the percentages to see how many people actually get that opportunity. Right. Well, you know, and I had a, a, a visitor to the campus uh, earlier this week, uh, Miss, uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Esther uh, Silver Parker. She's a retired uh, Vice President at Walmart, former VP at AT and T, uh, and just you know, very accomplished um, uh, lady who we we met through one of our alums in in Northwest Arkansas, and and so as I was you know taking her around the, the campus, giving her a tour, showed her my childhood home, which is literally right across from the from the campus, I said you know really I had no excuse not to be successful in some shape, form, or fashion. I mean you know. I was, product of a two-parent home, uh, you know, mother was a university professor, you know, dad was a, he was a businessman, uh, you know, all of that, you know, if, if I didn't amount to something, then shame on me, you know, because I had, I had every tool, I had every resource at my disposal. And, and I just, you know, I thank God that, uh, that, that he saw me through uh, you know, uh, looked after me when I wasn't looking out for myself, you know, and uh, made it been possible. There. 
<laughs> right, 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 and and made it possible for for me to uh, to to be able to to right now serve as president of this university and, and the other things that that I've done. But I, I know so many others who didn't have all of those opportunities yet. Uh, they are still as successful, if not more successful, than I am. Because again, first of all, I, I think you know God, uh, you know, provided because uh, He knows the the end from the beginning. And so, you know, I, I think no matter where you're, uh, you know, where you start in life, uh, if, if God is for you, who can be against you? And and right. uh, what He has for you is is for you. So, without getting in, into a sermon, I would just say that, that there are those who who do take advantage of, uh, you know, following the, the, the word of God and, and following in his steps and letting him guide their steps. And and you see so many success stories of individuals who come from all sorts of socioeconomic backgrounds, from, from all types of uh, environments who are ultimately successful and, and don't let their, where they start, deter them from getting to where where God has uh, has set out for them to uh, to ultimately be. Mm-hmm. And you, you know, you know, Dr. Gallo, that's that that's beautifully put. Allow me, as an old teacher, old principal, to just say, too many times I I hear people try to say that, you know, well, you you should have done this, you should have done that because of things you've shared. But I always tell told my students, hey man, don't apologize because those same people that are talking about what you should have done wish they had been in your shoes sure sure, sure. In their, in their, in their, and I, i'm not i know you're not apologizing i'm just saying sometimes students get caught up with that because there's so many students as you know that have those opportunities and throw them away mm-hmm. well so and, you know, a lot, yeah. one of the things we talk about uh, and and i talk about quite often and again when i'm out recruiting uh students is that you know we will meet you where you are mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and help to take you where you have the potential to go. Now, that, mm-hmm. that can mean a couple of different things. You, you will have someone who has absolute raw talent to, to do amazing things, but just not having anyone who has previously taken the time to, to really nurture what they have, okay? And so, you know, that's where we, we create, and, and you know, we talk about the Grambling family or the hashtag Gram fam. We, we really do take our, our university community as a family unit seriously, okay? And so we, we will meet those students who need that, that extra services or, or that, that extra bit of, uh, of attention to, to get them where, where they are. Now, there are also those who have had every opportunity, but perhaps lack the appropriate level of motivation to really utilize that uh, that talent they have to really take them where they where they want to go, and I, I want to use one young lady as an example who came to Grambling. Uh, I think she was originally from the uh, from the state of Colorado. Was majoring in criminal justice. She was in a math class, and and the math instructor. It, it didn't take him long to figure out that that her ability in math was so much more. Than, than she re- even realized, okay? And so he uh, he talked to her and said, you know, what are you majoring in? She said, well, I'm, I'm in criminal justice because that's what somebody else in the family majored in and that was just kind of where, where she settled. But he said, look, with, with the ability that you have, I'd like for you to consider changing your major to mathematics. Well, she changed her major she graduated with a degree in in mathematics when she took the gre she scored a perfect score on the math wow. section of wow. the GRE. and she now has has a um, has a phd in, in mathematics and, and and i'm i'm having a senior moment now because her her name is escaping me and i apologize for uh, for that but again it, it just shows that you know we we have the kind of faculty and, and staff who, who really Look to help you develop those skills and talents and gifts that uh, that that you come here with, and and so that's why we we really do take the the Graham fam uh, you know moniker very very seriously, and and we we really want our students to be be successful and to be all that they have the potential to uh, to be. Wow, that that is great. You know, as you 
come to a, a, a close with with the with the Gremlin tradition. You know, a lot of universities don't have that. And and uh, if I might just a second you know, revisit when you as you were explaining about HBCUs, I think that's where a lot of people miss it. And have having and and I just go on record. I have no no shame about that. Uh, having having uh, began my career at HBCU and only thinking about football and because of a friend transferred next door to you mm -hmm. and. Uh, that that's another story I'd talk to you about later. But sure. I mean, the, the atmosphere is nothing. I mean, it's totally different. And, and we spent all of our life at Grambling, mm -hmm. to be very honest with you. Right. So, uh, you know, it, 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 it's just uh, people don't seem to understand that is much more to it. And, and please allow me to say, as you just shared, what I didn't understand when I was a young man in high school and they were asking, you know, do you think you can make it at various universities? I'll say LSU, et cetera. Again, I'm thinking football. I'm not thinking about all of the other nuances that you're going to deal with. And you talked about that earlier. So, you know, and, 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 and hearing uh, you share that, that's that's very uh, enriching. And, and I see it, it, you probably see me keep looking up and looking down like this. We have monitors and uh, you, when you're talking, all these thumbs up are going up for you and the hearts are going up as well. So people are really happy about what you're saying. I'm just shocked that they're not asking any questions. <laughs> well, yeah. well, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, no, I, I, I was just going to say, uh, actually I was going to ask you if there was more you wanted to share. I don't want to be, I don't want to keep you over time. I, I, I just looked at my clock here. I didn't know we had gone 30 minutes already. Right. Oh man, the time goes, goes, goes by fast. But you know, one of the things I, I, I would share is that, you know, as we think about the, uh, the the notoriety of, of Coach Robinson in the football program and, and of the of the band uh, and and I, I had a, a student one time to uh, tell me well Mr President if you're not on the on the football team or you're not in the band then, uh, then then you're not important and I said no that that is absolutely not true now I I do not uh, shy away from the fact that our football program and Coach Robinson and, and the band are largely responsible for the, the national and international brand that, that yes. is Graham. Okay. And so uh, the one thing I'll, I'll never do is, is try to kill the, the goose that laid the golden egg. Okay. But, but here's where, and I, I explained this uh, in, in another faculty meeting recently, you know, and, and I've had others along the way say, Oh, well, you know, uh, everybody just you know worries about football and band. They don't don't care about academics. I say, let let me show you how the intersection of, of all of that comes comes into play. I visited the uh, the headquarters of the National Football League twice this summer. Okay. My ability to get into the headquarters at at NFL was based upon the football program at Grambling and the fact that you know our band performed in the first Super Bowl, okay? Mm -hmm. But once inside and, and meeting with, with uh, Troy Vincent, who's, who's one of the vice presidents there at, uh, at the NFL, we talked about internship opportunities for our students in our new cybersecurity program, uh, in our accounting program, in marketing, uh, in sports management, all of those things that we do on the academic side of the house, I was able to talk about those things because football and band opened the door. Okay. And so mm -hmm. we, we don't have to, it's not a scarcity mentality that, you know, we can only focus on, uh, on football and band and, and not on academics. They all work together. We're still a university. Okay. And, and so, uh, you know, that, I think that helps people to better understand that, that, uh, that the academic side is not an, an afterthought. We, we are, we are total, package and so when we have these opportunities that present themselves because of, of band and football or football and band it just gives us a chance to uh you know give you another example you know with with the band we've done several coke commercials over the years uh well, yeah. well that uh the band has done these and and what they were featured in a in a recent uh coca-cola commercial i don't know, don't know nice. seeing that okay yeah so we we were uh uh, we had several band members that were. It wasn't a, a, a you know big one like the like the one back uh, that the band did previously, but there were band members who were in this uh, uh, in yes. this person. But in yes. addition to that, we have students who do internships at uh, at Coca Cola. Uh, 
uh, Coca-Cola selected Grambling as one of five HBCUs to launch a pilot entrepreneurial program. And so the, the concept of, of this pilot program is that not only should we teach students how to graduate and go out and get jobs, we should prepare them to go out and create jobs. And right. so this is a competition that, uh, that, that's uh, support or sponsored by, by Coca-Cola and uh, students have an opportunity to win, I think it's up to about $7,500 in, uh, in prizes, laptop and, and some other things that, that they can win if they you know, are successful in the, in the competition. And again, it, it teaches uh, students how to look at being job creators, not just uh, job seekers. And, and so again, mm -hmm. there, there's all this, um, you know, the, this interrelated uh, activity. You think about uh, what the band did uh, earlier this year, back back in the spring, uh, were invited by Beyonce to to go right. out and and perform for uh, for her at a uh, at a co branded event of Ivy Park, which is uh, Beyonce's uh, apparel brand and Adidas. And so you know to to have uh, our band selected out of all of the HBCU bands that that could have been asked to come. You know, Beyonce and her team specifically uh, asked for us to to bring our band to perform for her. And so mm -hmm. it, it was an amazing success. You know, our students were able to personally meet Beyonce and Jay-Z. I mean, they are, you know, arguably one of the, the, the most powerful uh, couples in, in all of entertainment right now, you know, with net worth. Uh, in in the billions, you know, mm -hmm. and so to for them to to not only be in the room with and perform for them, they actually got a chance to meet with meet them and, and take pictures and and do all of these things. Those those are incredible opportunities that our students would not have had the opportunity to experience, but for the the reputation and the uh, and the brand value of Grambling State University and the world famed Tiger Marching Band. So again, that's just another example of, of how those those, uh, those worlds intersect to provide opportunities. And our students will be able to talk about that for the, for the rest of their lives, yeah. that yeah. they were, uh, that, that they had that, uh, had that opportunity. Yeah. Wow. You know, Doc, doc I, I, may I say respectfully, when I hear it explained that way, because there are so many people and sadly, 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 just just don't get the picture. And is that the, and you said it, the band in the football drives people to the university and then, and then the rest takes care of itself. If you will, I keep saying I'm not gonna hold you all day. If you just tell us a little bit about the, the cybersecurity uh, uh, new initiative that you have going on at Grambling. Sure, and, and so uh, we are the, the first and only school in the state of Louisiana to offer a bachelor's degree in cybersecurity. So we, we launched that program this fall and we, we're incredibly excited about it. Number one, because uh, you know, with all the cyber threats that, uh, that exist in the world today, there is currently today about a 2.5 million job uh, openings that can't be filled because the professionals have not been trained to fill these these roles in in cybersecurity. So, uh, and and again, the threats are only continuing to uh, to increase uh, every day that 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 goes by. So, you know, this is an area that will provide our students a uh, a, a great career uh, in in four years. I would argue that you know, in the next 10, 15, 20 years, that there will there will continue to be this cat and mouse. Uh, you know, competition that will take place between those who want to uh, hack into your, uh, your your technology, into your phones, into, and, and as we think about the internet of things, you know, it, everything that, that we own now is, is basically connected to the internet. You know, the, the, right. uh, the tablet, the iPad that I have here, the, the smart TV that, uh, that I'm interacting with you own now, uh, you know, mobile phones, smartphones, uh, your refrigerator, your uh, security system at your, your car, you know, every day there, there's some new product or existing product that is, uh, is connecting to the internet to do something. So 
uh, this is this is one of those fields that uh, will will absolutely provide a great career. Those jobs today start anywhere between seventy five and eighty thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. Now, and that that's an entry level that's an entry level position. If you right. can imagine what you know, what two to five years experience with this cybersecurity degree is going to uh, provide, it it is you know it, it is certainly a, a, a way to make a good living for. Uh, for an individual or for a family for the for the foreseeable future. I mean, the, the only way that, that those jobs are no longer necessary is, is if all of our electric grid is completely taken out and, and we've got no electricity to run computers. Uh, other than that, I suspect that uh, that there will be uh, there will be a need for, uh, for for those areas. And so uh, this this has definitely given us yet another and, and here's here's What's really important, and a lot of people are not aware of it, you know, we graduated our first class of computer science graduates from Grambling in 1972. All right, so we've been in, in this business of create uh, of uh, training computer scientists uh, here at Grambling for for a really long time. At one point, we were the number one producer of computer science graduates in the entire African American computer science graduates in the entire country. Now we are st- we are number one in the state of Louisiana. We're responsible for over forty percent of the African American graduates in computer science and computer information system in the country. I mean, in the in the state of Louisiana, and we're still in the top fifty in terms of uh, the number that we're producing. So as we have brought this uh, cyber program on uh, as an addition to our uh, computer science department. Uh, we will definitely see those those numbers uh, uh, continue to grow. We are in the, in the top 10 overall in terms of the number of African-American graduates that we're producing in, in the country. So we're, uh, you know, we, we are certainly that the academic side is getting uh, additional press and, and notoriety on its own. Uh, and this will, will only continue to grow as, as we expand on, on this. You know, one of the other things that as we uh, continue to expand our, our technology footprint, we are uh, we broke ground with Governor John Bell Edwards a few weeks ago on what will be the state's first and only digital library in the state in the state of Louisiana. Will be one of only a handful in the country digital libraries, and so this will again give us because uh, the, the library of today is not the library that that you and I have. I mean, there's. There's no longer a card catalog and a bunch of books that you go and, uh, and, right. and try and access. The, the world of libraries is very different now. And so uh, we, we are looking towards the future and, and preparing our students, again, not only for the jobs of today, but we're, we're preparing them from, for the jobs of 2030. Mm-hmm. And, okay, that's the position that, uh, that, that we're, uh, we're, we're constantly shooting for. Uh, and I think it was Wayne Gretzky, and I, I may not have the. Uh, I'll paraphrase this uh, uh, this this quote that uh, that he uh, he skates to where the puck is going to be, not where it is. And so right. that that has been been our goal to uh, to position this university for where the puck is going to be. Going to be, wow. That's that. That's fantastic. May I ask one more question? And I promise you, we're going to end. No, <laughs> right I, I I wonder. Well, uh, on on one of my shows, Doc, we were we were doing a show. We being uh, Dr. Dunson, Coney, and and uh, Ron Ross Slacks and Daryl Triplett. Uh, Daryl Triplett is a Grambling alumni. I played football yes. there. He's an artist. Oh, but uh, nice. we nice. we had a young man that came on the show, and he said he was 17 years old and he blew us all away because we were just talking about the the movement about a thing we have called shackles 400 from 1619 to 2019 and this kid said to us he said sometimes i am embarrassed to be black because of how we act and the things that we do and we don't carry ourselves well so what would you say to a young man like that? I mean, I, I know what I would say, but I mean, if you could give him some advice, what advice would you give this young man? Because all the things you've just explained are so powerful mm-hmm. and they're happening right there at Grambling at an HBCU with an African-American chancellor at the helm. And to hear this 17 year, and I've heard this be- 
in, in so many ways before, be, again, having been a principal and all of that kind of stuff and having worked with Dr. George McKenna, I don't know if you're familiar with him or not. He, the George McKenna story I had in 86, he, it's just, it's a lean on me in Los Angeles to make a long story short. But this kid was very serious, doc. And if, as, as, and I know you've shared with us that, that you do recruiting and the university go out and do recruiting. And if you encountered this young man, what might you share with him to help him see himself? Well, and, and I think that's, that's why we are, again, as, as relevant now as, as we've ever been is because young men like the one you, you mentioned uh, need to uh, have the experience of, of being here and to be comfortable in his skin, to be comfortable in his blackness. OK, and I think that's that's one of the, the things that goes beyond just you know, having a, a cybersecurity degree, yes, you can go out and get a great job, but to feel comfortable in your skin, no matter where you go and knowing that what you've got up here absolutely has prepared you to not only compete with, but in, in, in many instances to outperform the, the peers who have come from, from other institutions and, and who, and, and here's the other thing, one of the things I, I hear quite often from, from alums who have come back, uh, one in particular, I, I'd, I'd like to uh, highlight uh, Adrian Butler. Uh, Adrian is, is originally from, uh, I think it's Epps, Louisiana. It's south of Monroe, uh, rural area, cotton country. Uh, came to Grambling, uh, majored in computer science, was in the ROTC, Air Force ROTC program, went into the Air Force as a, uh, as a second lieutenant, had a, had a great career, retired, and, and now works in, in the private sector doing, uh, he, he's the chief information officer at Dine Brands, which is the parent company of, of IHOP and uh, Applebee's among, among others. So he's the chief information officer. And before going there, he, he worked at Target in, in information uh, technology. And so for, for someone like Adrian, who who came from a you know from a rural agricultural area, who didn't see a lot of hope and promise in his immediate area, was able to come to a place like Grambling that that could provide him the tools he needed to go out and and be successful. And you know now, his son is a freshman in our uh, cybersecurity program. Now, okay. where, where Adrian is in, in, in his this point in his career, he could afford to send his son to, to Harvard, MIT or any place else that that he chose. But his son wanted to come to Grambling and he supported his son coming to Grambling. And, you know, the, the sad reality is that not all of our uh, not all of our alums from HBCUs support their children going to HBCUs, that they've somehow, you know, transcended uh, and, and they're, they're, you know, just beyond uh, the, what, what, a, what an HBCU can offer. And, and again, I think if nothing else, it will provide uh, our students with a comfort in their blackness, to feel comfortable in their skin, who they see in the mirror when, when they look in the mirror. And I, I think that level of self-confidence provides uh, our graduates with the opportunity to go out and compete across the board, no matter who it is that they're com competing against. So for, for that young man, that, that's why it's still important that, that we be here and, and that a Southern University and, and Paul Quinn and, and Texas Southern and Jackson State, we're, we're all still very much important for our people. Wow. You, you, you're right, Doc. Listen, I'm, I'm going to be a man of my word. <laughs> it's been it's been great having you, uh, uh, Dr. Gallo. But I, I, I would like to say that that I, I wanted to save that question for last because I, the young man's name was Damien, by the way. And I want to ask that, that to ask that because it 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 it, it shook me to hear in 2019 I, I, that I, a 17 year old would say that. And as I was sharing. When I talk about uh, the group Shackles 400, we, we, we're asking our audience, and I see thumbs going up as well for you, man. You've been great, man. We're going to keep you on <laughs> next <laughs> every week. <laughs> we're going to keep you on every week, man. They're going crazy with the thumbs and the hearts up. All right. But, uh, and hearts. 
but you know, and, and the shackles four hundred doc. If I can share briefly, this is not a commercial. That 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 is what we we are working on right now. We being Dunson Coney, uh, Dara Triplett, and Raw Slacks is the fact that you know to, to teach our kids about the the black code and then teach our kids about the pig laws and things like that, where 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 they do not understand or have any concept as to why they're being incarcerated so easily, why they're being murdered so easily, and understand the role that they travel. So with with the gramblings of the world, uh, and allow me to say at the risk of making some of my quote Louisiana Tech friends mad, my wife will tell you, I told her all the time, I said, listen, when I left Mississippi Valley and transferred to Tech, I said the classes at Valley were tougher. I, I dealt with a lot of racism at Tech. I said, but the class, because those teachers were, had something to prove. And, and, and Doc, I'm gonna say this in closing, I always wanted to play for Coach Eddie Robinson, so I used to scout for you guys, sit at his table. I didn't; he had coffee, etc. So I, I figured out a way to get into the Grambling family anyway. All right, <laughs> very good, very good. So listen, very Doc, good. It's, it's been great, great, great having you here. Uh, I, I'm going to put some information up for the people, but if 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 these individuals and man, they're still putting thumbs up and hearts. Uh, if if someone wants to contact you, what would be the best mode for them to contact you? Uh, probably by uh, email. My email is prez, P-R-E-Z, at gram.edu. Okay. I'm going to put this in the box here. And I'd recommend that uh, everyone go and visit our website, uh, gram.edu. Uh, our, our webpage is uh, P-R-E-Z. P-R-E-Z. What, what, what do we put in there? P R E A. Well, how do I get A? Hey, must be my big hands here. It, it, run, it runs in the family, Doc. Okay, got it. Chris. Okay. Uh, at Graham. Okay, I'm trying to see here. Okay. Chris. And go to our, our website, www.gram.edu. Gram.edu. Okay. Okay, Doc, it's certainly been a pleasure having you here. Listen, I just want to say to, to our viewers, we really thank you for being here. I, I, I said to uh, Dr. Gallo, and, and I'm just going to say it again, guys, I'm a little shocked that some of you didn't come on and talk to Dr. Gallo, but I we're, we're pleased with all the thumbs up and all the hearts that, that are going up, and we're certainly, certainly uh, grateful for you being here. Uh, for those of you that uh, may be not as busy around 4 p.m., uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to have Dr. Gerald Durley. Uh, that'll be our next guest today. And Dr. Durley was one of the right hand, honestly, right hand men for Dr. King. He's being honored this year with the Dr. MLK Jr. Award. He's out of Atlanta, Georgia. So please join us. Also, if you want to contact me, if you go to www.dyingonmyfeet.com, www.dyingonmyfeet.com, you'll find all of my social media sites there with Instagram, LinkedIn, the whole nine. Also, uh, understand this, when you walk in your own being, then and only then you know who you are. If you can't see yourself, you certainly can't see me. So we thank you for being here. We're very happy that you took the time to join us and to come and visit with Prez Gallo. Doc, we appreciate you, sir. We appreciate our audience. And we thank each and everyone for coming. Have a great and blessed day. Thank you so much. God bless you. And remember, Grammar State University is a place where everybody is somebody. God bless.